the, the first thing that Europe needs to learn from the world is to be multilingual, uh, both in terms of having multiplicity of languages, but also in terms of having different worldviews, uh, because each language contains within it possibilities of alternative competing worldviews. And I think uh, Europe could actually benefit from having uh, access to multiple worldviews. That's one. The second thing that Europe could actually learn from uh, a lot of societies in Africa, Latin America, is also Asia, is to have uh, the possibility of living in different times. Uh, uh, you know, there is a simultaneity of time which uh, uh, Europe has lost because the European society seems to be living in the present uh, uh, or in a unified time uh, perception, while a uh, large part of African and Asiatic societies have access to different perceptions of time and different communities living in different time uh, frames and that's something which uh, opens up the societies to uh, different possibilities. The third thing that Europe needs to have is uh, having or having within it or nurturing possibilities of different futures. Uh, European society I think sees itself as having one unified future towards which, uh, towards which it seems to be moving. Uh, while uh, a lot of the other societies have a notion of an open-ended future, but open-ended futures that are competing worldviews and competing ideologies which, uh, which open up different kinds of thought possibilities about the trajectories that these societies could take. So I think these are three large things that um, Europe could seek to cultivate.